Hello, I'm gonna read chapter six from The Unteachables by Gordon Corman. All right, here we go. Chapter six, Matteo Hendrickson. When I get really bored, which is every day, I match people I know with characters from TV and movies. For example, my sister Lauren is like Venom from Spider-Man because she's evil and she spits poison. Well, not literally, but since I invented the classification system, I get to choose who's what. Just don't tell my mom because she's like Professor McGonagall from Harry Potter. Smart and usually fair, but she can be very nasty when something ticks her off, like me comparing Lauren to a Spider-Man villain. It works for the kids at school too. Parker is like Lightning McQueen because he's the only kid who drives. Barnstorm is the Flash since he was such a great athlete before he wound up on crutches. Raheem is a little tricky, but I think of him as Birdman because he has really big ears that could easily expand to wings if he gets bitten by a radioactive canary. Crazy, I know, but in comics that kind of thing happens all the time. Anyway, I can always switch him to Sleeping Beauty. He's not that beautiful, but he is that sleeping. Elaine is a cross between Chewbacca from Star Wars and Lois Lane, who rhymes with pain. I try not to get too close to her. She once picked a kid up by the belt and used his head to poke at a fluorescent light that was buzzing. Kiana is blonde phantom because they're both from California, even though Kiana's hair is closer to light brown. And Aldo? That's easy. Dr. Bruce Banner, who turns into the Incredible Hulk when he gets mad. As for me, I'm part Hobbit and part Vulcan, Bilbo and Spock, big logic in a little package. That leaves just our teacher, Mr. Kermit. He's tough to characterize. I'm leaning towards Squidward because he comes to class in the morning, but because when he comes from class, comes to class in the morning, he reminds me of Squidward coming to work at the Krusty Krab, bored and bummed out. And he treats us the way Squidward treats the customers. He doesn't hate us exactly, but he definitely wishes we were someplace else. He's even a little grumpier than Squidward because he doesn't have a hobby like playing the clarinet, unless you count crossword puzzles and consuming mass quantities of coffee. For someone who's supposed to be a teacher, he sure doesn't do too much teaching. He mostly just hands out worksheets. The only time he talks is when somebody asks a question that usually ends up being me. Mr. Kermit, why do the magnetic poles reverse? With effort, the teacher tears his attention away from his puzzle. Excuse me? Every 250,000 years, Earth's magnetic poles reverse, I explain. I was just wondering why that happens. Yes, but what does that have to do with? Reluctantly, he glances from his New York Times to the worksheet on his desk beside it, using vocabulary words in a sentence. I want to do a sentence on Magneto, I reason, but since his superpower is magnetism and electric charge, he'd be affected by that. That's another thing about Mr. Kermit. He isn't very helpful when one of his students is curious about something. The only other time there are questions is when Parker is trying to figure out what a word is. That turns into kind of a game in SCS 8, figuring out what he means by tram gully when the word was actually metallurgy. <laughs> Sometimes the whole class gets in on guessing. It's the only fun we have during school. It can be, it can get pretty loud when people start laughing at Parker. Mr. Kermit's usually okay with it unless Miss Fountain comes in, comes over to explain that we're disturbing her class. Then he chews us out. He doesn't get mad at us, but he can't stand it when she does. This one time, Barnstorm makes a big stink, pounding his desk with both crutches because the football team is holding its first pep rally and he isn't going to be up there with the players. It's not fair, man, he roars. Just because I'm injured doesn't mean I'm not a golden eagle. Kermit's curiosity is suddenly piqued. If you were in the pep rally, you'd have to leave now, right? You'd be somewhere else for the rest of the day? Barnstorm nods. The team gets the whole afternoon off to prepare for it and I'm stuck here working. That might be pushing it a little. I've seldom seen Barnstorm pick up a pencil. That sounds reasonable to me, Mr. Kermit agrees. It isn't your fault you got injured. Why should you have to suffer for it? I get the feeling that Mr. Kermit doesn't care 
that much about justice for Barnstorm. What he really wants is to get this disturber of the peace out of room 117 before he puts one of those crutches through a wall. Miss Fountain would definitely notice that. So he goes on the intercom and demands to have Barnstorm included in the, in the rally. He argues his way through three secretaries and the assistant principal, and he won't take no for an answer. We are blown away. It's a whole new side of our teacher none of us have seen before. He's actually fighting for one of the one of us when we would have bet money that he barely even noticed we were here. Put me through to Coach Slattery, Mr. Kermit insists. He's in class right now, comes the reply from the speaker. Well, get him out of class, our teacher retorts. Justice and fairness aren't just part of the social studies curriculum, you know. They're the building blocks of our entire society. No one is more amazed than Barnstorm himself. That's what I'm talking about he approves in a satisfied tone. By the time Mr. Kermit gets on with the athletic office, he's really worked up. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, he accuses Cloach Slattery. You send these kids out there to be tackled and elbowed and hit with hockey sticks, and when they get injured, you abandon them? When the coach finally breaks down and says, okay, whatever, send them down, our whole class breaks into applause. You are awesome, Mr. Kermit, Kiana explains. You should be in the Justice League, I add. He looks startled as if he didn't realize anybody was listening. He turns to Barnstorm. Well, off you go. Enjoy your... His voice trails off. Pep rally, I, help, I supply him helpfully. Barnstorm is already thump swinging toward the door. Thanks, Mr. Kermit. Throughout the afternoon, our teacher keeps looking at Barnstorm's empty desk and smiling. Another first for him. At the end of the day, when we are called down to the pep rally, he smiles all the way to the auditorium, even though our class is always terrible marching through the hallways. Aldo karate kicks lockers and Raheem stakes out a water fountain so he can spray people. This seventh grader gives Elaine a hard time about blocking the stairs, but only till he realizes that he's talk who he's talking to. Better to be blocked on the stairs than take a one-way trip down them or to have a classroom door slammed on your head or any other things Elaine does to people who annoy her. The kid apologizes and gets out of there so fast that he slams into Parker. They both end up blocking the stairs for real. Not even that spoils Mr. Kermit's mood. It's a problem. He's much too happy to be Squidward now. Not even, oops, I'm not following along. Until we reach the auditorium, we're standing there waiting for our turn to file in when an ear-splitting honk goes off right behind us. Mr. Kermit practically hits the ceiling. He wheels around to see this kid with a bright green vuvuzuela, one of those noisemakers that look like a long trumpet. They're kind of a tradition for Golden Eagle sports because one of our school board members is from South Africa where they were invented. Without a word, Mr. Kermit snatches the thing out of the kid's hand and throws it to the floor and stomps, on, stomps it flat. The boy looks up at him, lip quivering. But it's a pep rally. Who says pep can't be quiet? The teacher's furious eyes fix on a girl who's holding a purple one. Don't even think about it. Nervously, she whisks the instrument behind her back. Kermit, Mr. Kermit nods. That's the spirit. The pro problem solved. He's Squidward again. When it comes to Vuvuzuelas, he might as well be Lex Luthor. At the pep rally, they make us sit in the back just in case we have to be kicked out. Our class always sits in the back, even in the cafeteria. The teachers don't want us anywhere near the soda machine. They think giving us sugar is like sprinkling water on gremlins. I cheer when Barnstorm is introduced. I've never known anybody on a team before. He waves a crutch in our direction and a few of the other kids clap too. Then Raheem falls asleep. His head slumps over and conks the girl sitting next to him. We get kicked out. All right, it's the end of chapter six. Next up will be chapter seven, uh, told by Kiana Rubini. Have a good one.